Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. Hope everyone's having a phenomenal night. Hope you all had a great weekend. I thought I'd take some time to talk about the Ahsoka show, some recent news and revelations, and kind of just give my opinion. I want to do this because there's been a lot of discourse around Ahsoka, and I just want to put my thoughts out there while we still have some time to anticipate the show. Now, instead of just playing the trailer over and over again, I thought you guys might enjoy some footage I captured from the new Warhammer game, Bolt Gun. I've been having a phenomenal time with this. I may actually do a video on it. Let me know if that's something you're interested in down below. All right, so this week's bit of Ahsoka news comes from Empire. Aside from new images, we got an interesting quote from Dave Filoni, and presumably we'll get more later, but let's talk about this to start the video off. Filoni says this about Ahsoka. She's a wanderer at this point, and is in a lot of ways wary of an organization as such because of the power that comes with it as a group. She walks a path that basically died out a long time ago, and there aren't many like her left, if any. That's a lonely thing. What is that life like? If you are a loner, you have a very small circle of friends. What's it like then when you try to open back up? So it seems to me that one of the main themes of Ahsoka is going to be the character dealing with a new, apparently benevolent authority. I say apparently because we saw how Ahsoka was affected in a sort of Kafka-esque away by the forces of good in the Clone Wars when she was framed for a crime she didn't commit. I think this is interesting because it sort of sets up a natural bit of tension between her and the new New Republic government, and some of you may be thinking, is that appropriate for this time period? Well, yes. The New Republic sort of self-collapsing on itself is pretty prominent in the Thrawn trilogy, especially through the character of Borsk Failia, who I seriously hope appears in this show. Borsk Failia is like the personification or Bothan personification of the worst parts of government. Bureaucracy, greed, a desire for power, all in one being. We've had hints that the New Republic may not be the most effective government when it comes to dealing with military threats and other bits of canon lore. They seem unwilling to expand their sphere of influence to the point where it takes them in direct conflict with military groups. Instead, preferring to demilitarize and let individual systems protect themselves. The problem with that, the Empire hasn't been dead long enough for individual systems to build their own defense fleet, so when Thrawn comes ripping through with 12 Star Destroyers, you need the New Republic to step in, and it seems like they've spent a lot of the past five or six years just trashing their fleet. Speaking of fleet, we know from one of the leaked trailers that an E-Wing will appear in the show. I also have hopes that we see the first live-action Starhawk. Now, I've never told this story on the channel. I actually got to see some concept art of the Starhawk before it was finalized. I can't say how or from whom, but there were some pretty wacky ideas, and I'm glad they went with, well, the one they went with. The other big topic of discussion has been Grand Admiral Thrawn, and specifically how the character feels like he's being pulled in two different directions. This has been an issue with the character since Star Wars Legends. In his first appearance, the Thrawn trilogy, Thrawn is not quite as outright evil as the Emperor himself or even as Vader. He doesn't kill people indiscriminately, but he's a cold-hearted, tactical military leader, and he's purely for the Empire. Later sources, like the Thrawn duology, the Outbound Flight novel, and others, established that Thrawn had some secondary or even primary motives. He was mostly trying to protect the galaxy, protect his people, the Chiss, and we've seen the same thing happen in Star Wars canon. Thrawn in Rebels is pretty much a stout Imperial. He wants to destroy the Rebels because they stand against the Empire. However, in the Thrawn trilogy of novels, both trilogies actually, he's much more nuanced. He actually joins the Empire again because he wants to protect the Chiss Ascendancy. There's the big question of how is the show going to deal with him, and I think it's pretty obvious that it's going to take the approach that the original trilogy did. Thrawn will be a villain. He will be a clear-cut villain, not an anti-hero, not a villain with with good motivations like a Thanos. No, he wants to defeat the rebels, the New Republic, so the Empire can reign supreme again. And honestly, if you're a fan of Timothy Zahn's writing about the characters, you'll just have to come to terms with that. Timothy Zahn's view on Thrawn has evolved over the years, for one, but you can also say that, well, Thrawn joined the Empire, he figured out that that was the best method to protect the galaxy, and he became a hardliner. He always was, in canon at least, pretty weak when it came to the political aspect 
aspects of running a military. All right, the other topic I wanted to touch was the new Dark Jedi, and that's just what I'm going to call them, Shin and Balin. Now, first of all, when it comes to Balin, there was, of course, the very sad news that Ray Stevenson passed away a few weeks ago. Now, above all else, Ray Stevenson is a human. The saddest thing about his death is the fact that he, as a being, is gone from this world. But as a fan, you do have to wonder, what does that mean for the character? And again, I don't mean that in any sort of cold or non-thoughtful way. It's just something interesting to think about because Ray's presence in the first trailer, I thought was just so compelling. I hope that they're able to tell his story in a good and complete way. But man, Balin really hits something for me on a Star Wars level that just hasn't been hit for a long time. And watching the show now is going to definitely give me some mixed feelings. Shin, though, I also find really compelling. Someone mentioned that she's kind of or could be the new Mara Jade in the trilogy. She's some Imperial lackey. She seems to be almost like an assassin. That's pretty similar to Mara Jade as the Emperor's Hand. But one thing I like about the character is she just gives off this feeling of being profoundly unwell. I think it's the eyes. She's got crazy eyes, just putting it simply. Too many Inquisitors and Darksiders are just like ordinary seeming guys or gals with British accents. No, she's on one. She's probably totally insane and that adds to the danger of her character. The last thing I wanted to mention though is the casting. The Star Wars Rebels crew seems to be portrayed so well. Obviously some characters like Zeb are CG, Chopper's Chopper, but this new image of Sabine has just sold me once again on this show. I really feel like it's going to be a combination of two of my favorite Star Wars things of all time, the Thrawn trilogy and Star Wars Rebels. I'm excited. I think it's going to be great. I cannot wait until August and before then the next trailer. Just my thoughts though. Let me know yours down below.